Good evening, everyone. First of all, thank you very much for joining today for this webinar. Let me introduce myself. My name is Godwin James. I am a second year PhD student at National University of Ireland, Galway. I work on plant epigenetics. I'm your technical host. Um, I welcome everyone on behalf of LLB School for our third session of International Career Talk webinar series on the successful journey of biotechnologists and bioinformaticians. In case if you missed the first two talks, I would recommend you to go to LLB School YouTube channel. Today, I am honored to welcome our guest speaker, Professor Priscilla J. Kumari, and thank you very much for accepting our invitation. Uh, Professor Priscilla will be talking about various career opportunities in biotechnology and its allied subjects. So stay tuned for the talk. Next slide, please. Before that, I want to introduce to you to the new initiative of LLB School Futura. The aim of this initiative is to connect biology students and professionals and researchers in biology and bioinformatics under one roof to share their knowledge and collaborate. So we provide several services to biologists and bioinformaticians. Next slide, please. So we can you can join us to facilitate we facilitate collaborators with researchers in your area and also we you can work as a freelancer to shape up your skills and also we have tutors and also you can consult with our expert consultants so having said all that you can alone we can do so little and together we can do so much so sign up and join us build this community so for some technical notes kindly turn off your webcam and mute your audio for better webinar session you can type in your questions in the chat box please avoid personal introductions in the chat box subscribe our youtube channel to confirm your presence and as mentioned in the uh, email feedback link will be shared in a, a whatsapp group at 7 45 pm and for getting the certificate type in your name without any mistake while downloading the certificate and now I hand over the session to Madhana Priya to give a brief introduction about Professor Briskilla and her journey. And also I want to thank all the collaborators, Center for Plant Molecular Biology and IMOT Forum. So Madhana Priya, yeah. Uh, thank you, sir. A uh, very warm welcome to all the participants and LLB members. On this evening, on behalf of LLB School, I take great pleasure to introduce Professor Priscilla Jabakumari the speaker of the International Career Series, Session 3. Priscilla Ma'am did a bachelor's and master's in Osmania University, followed by MPhil and PhD in microbial, microbial composting and microbiology from Madras University. She's a retired faculty from the Department of Plant Biology and Plant Biotechnology, Stella Maris College. She has held various posts and positions during a work period, from being the Dean of Students, Dean of Academics and she has also been the vice principal at Stella Maris College. Her service was extended to a wide range as being the coordinator for Rotrak Club and importantly, she's a coordinator for UGC certificate program on herbal therapy and beauty care till date. She has contributed a lot to the society by eco initiatives like the Green Park Restorations, Tree Senses and also the functional expert on ecology and biodiversity to MNCs recognized by the NABARD. Though her field of expertise is in microbiology, Ma'am has always been interested in ethnobotanical research in implementing traditional treatments from the tribal people to various diseases. She is also actively involved in the tribe development program and a path to plant biotechnology has no bounds. On this note, I take great pleasure to say that I was a student for bachelor's and she has always been a great pillar of support and the sculptor who kindled the research interest in me. Today, I am definitely proud to host you, Priscilla, ma'am, for the evening and excited to listen to her talk. I hope all the participants get the best of her and benefit in their future endeavors. It's a great pleasure, ma'am, to host you for today and the session is all yours now. Thank you, Madana, for the lovely introduction. So good evening, everybody. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So we start the session. So uh, I had given uh, the title as career options in botany and biotechnology uh, simply for the reason 
that uh, there is no more compartmentalization between the various subjects. It's more an interdisciplinary approach which we have nowadays. So therefore, uh, that was my uh, intention in putting specifically botany and more so being a botany graduate and postgraduate. Uh, I thought uh, I could maybe do more justice if I could uh, lean on the subject botany. Next. Next slide. Okay, now the word biotechnology, if you see, is actually an interaction between uh, biology and technology. The most simplest of the uh, definition for biotechnology, I can say. So when you say biology, it, would, it surpasses and includes, includes so many different areas, uh, botany and zoology. Maybe you could, uh, my suggestion, call somebody else with a zoology background and they'll be uh, able to add more information. And uh, just to run through very quickly the vari various areas under biotechnology, uh, the first one I would like to draw your attention to human health. Now, the importance and significance of biotechnology and human health uh, cannot be more pronounced as we see uh, these days uh, of pandemic. Uh, we know whether it is diagnosis or whether it is vaccine development, it is all about biotechnology and all those uh, 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 pharmaceuticals and the biotechnology institutions, research centers, which are uh, literally uh, working day and out and on fast track. And uh, we only hope and pray that everything will uh, come soon and then we'll be able to meet each other and uh, uh, maybe uh, have more uh, successful or uh, good ventures. And quickly running through, we see uh, agriculture. So agriculture uh, is basically agriculture biotechnology has an, had an impact uh, by producing transgenic plants, high yielding plants or uh, uh, soil tolerant plants, etc., which we'll see later on. And uh, forestry, of course, through my micro, uh, micro propagation, more of afforestation has been done. And uh, with respect to horticulture and uh, floriculture, now this is something which uh, maybe most of the biotechnologists, pure biotechnologists might not know. But uh, people with the UG background of botany or maybe even uh, your pure science students will definitely know the significance of uh, horticulture and uh, floriculture. So where horticulture is concerned, fruits, vegetables, etc., etc., all growing, processing them, and you know, uh, all those things come under horticulture and floriculture. Definitely flowers, and we do have uh, good flowers. I mean, which can be exported, and uh, especially uh, it can become definitely a cash crop, and uh, that is something where biotechnology plays a very significant role in floriculture. And coming to the food, uh, I think food is something which will never become redundant. Uh, I, I, I hope you'll agree with me because even these pandemic days, the only industry or the uh, people who are very busy were uh, people producing food or making it available. Of course, that is the vital uh, source for us for our survival. And therefore, similarly, even biotechnological approach to food processing and dairy uh, is immense. And uh, actually, if you see, there are a lot of uh, lucrative uh, job opportunities in these areas for students with biotechnology. If you have a small slant or you have technical skills which can be utilized in food processing industry or food technology, I think that's one of the best uh, uh, prime important biotechnology uh, nowadays. And then quickly running through to re renewable energy, you know, of course, biogas and biofuel and uh, aquaculture, of course, definitely it is something to do with the zoology. And uh, there is a lot of uh, application biotechnological approach to aquaculture and uh, especially with regard to prawns etc where uh, it is being utilized and uh, produced in large number and there are large number of uh, uh, companies which are exporting uh, uh, prawns to other countries next going to plant biotechnology okay now what exactly how does plant biotechnology fit into either research and development or into career now uh, the very first uh, thing which comes to our attention will be tissue culture and genetic engineering. engineering. These are the two prime important features of plant biotechnology. Okay, so if whether it is biotic or abiotic, so we can produce transgenic plants which are resistant to biotic um, stress. Now, what is a biotic stress? Something which is when a plant is being ridden by maybe a pest, a pest. Okay, 
and if it is uh, an insect which is attacking it how does it overcome so there has been uh, transgenic plants which have been produced and one typical example or uh, is uh, that bt cotton which most of us know how uh, we are able to they were able to produce this transgenic plant okay uh, because it has the cry gene and uh, it is able to produce a toxin and which when the insect eats it dies right so that's a very successful story of uh, uh, plant uh, biotechnology uh, which has been uh, gone on the application side similarly actually uh, just to run through very quickly there are uh, certain transgenic plants like vitamin rich rice uh, uh, maize which is actually an oral vaccine for uh, chicken and uh, there is a corn borer uh, transgenic plant okay and uh, herbicide resistant soybean and we also have canola okay which has a fatty acid composition alter so that it is not very detrimental to the on the to the people who consume it so biotic stresses have to some extent overcome because of transgenic plants secondly abiotic abiotic will be of course all the environmental factors it could be uh, uh, drought or salt etc where they have produced large number of salt uh, resistant plants etc and then we go on to the uh, haploids which are raised through tissue culture okay and uh, also uh, we have this um, clonal multiplication what is clonal multiplication is nothing but tissue culture okay and micro propagation so when we have the same one clone okay the one particular plant which has been produced many times okay through my micro propagation now this helps in combating okay the need for producing many medicinal plants now suppose the medicinal plants if you have to grow in a field could uh, in uh, i mean uh, will be subject to a lot of vagaries etc and the propagation might be not as fast as the uh, micro propagation so after one stage it is brought into the field then it helps definitely in improving or increasing the availability of these plants thereby uh, increasing the amount of bioactive substances required so uh, that's about the and cryo preservation not, that's nothing but uh, preserving you know the gene right uh, the genomes uh, earlier we had seed bank then we went to gene bank so this cryo preservation so it is a very important component for the future and you know for the um, uh, for the plant diversity this is one of the most important feature which definitely leans on by bio, plant biotechnology and uh, next i would just like to give you few uh, institutes okay i uh, actually went through next slide i went through the internet only to find out this but uh, maybe i can throw light on few of these institutes uh, for example the crop processing technology in tanjavur now this uh, these are institutes and research centers where a biotechnologist can definitely contribute because they have the skill skill sets what are the skill sets we'll see later on but definitely crop processing so whether it is rice or whether it is going to be uh, the different pulses which are going to be processed definitely uh, the quality assurance and the quality control all this can be taken up by plant biotechnologists and i would like to draw your attention to this icrisat international crops research institute for the semi arid tropics this is one of the best institutes and uh, i have had the privilege of visiting this and this is a beautiful institute where they concentrate more on these uh, millet and uh, groundnut and they have a big seed bank for groundnut and where they raise plants okay through uh, which will be suitable in semi arid tropics semi arid tropics will be those areas where it doesn't receive enough rain it might not be very methodical monsoon season so erratic and this place uh, is ideal is ideally a semi arid tropic and uh, they have produced large number of uh, plants which can grow well and yield better under these conditions so these are such institutes which are specifically for certain reasons so similarly spices okay then cotton production of cotton yield or whatever the quality of cotton all this can be enhanced by application of plant biotechnology next uh, we have some more institutes it is uh, like institutes like cashew nut and cocoa then uh, we also have national institute next slide national institute of plant genome research now uh, i just would like to draw your attention to plant genome because this is becoming a very important component of study nowadays area of research plant genome so human genome just that way we have plant genome so there are databases which are being created and uh, you know starting from arabidopsis 
we have now come a long way a large number of plants have been identified for the entire genome sequence so therefore now this has an enormous application so you we i mean as biotechnologists or plant biotechnologists or as botany students you can definitely have more weightage or you can give more uh, you know you will have more knowledge or a basic information which will contribute to studies on plant genome and that is becoming the in thing and in almost all the institutes in fact one of my students was sharing she's working in um, Shankar Netralia, she's actually doing her uh, JRF there. And she was telling that uh, she has gone into from being a plant biotechnologist, she's moved on to finding uh, the uh, medicinal plant, I mean, from a uh, medicine from a plant source. And she's actively involved in the sequencing of that particular plant, genome sequencing. And also, she's going into bioinformatics. So that's how interrelated today's research is so whether you are a bioinformatic person or your biotechnologist or a botanist as long as you have the skill and you have the desire and also you have the creativity and you have the scientific mind i'm sure you can have your uh, get into any of these institutes either as a research and development uh, jrf or srf at the same time you can also maybe get jobs in some of these places okay next next slide uh, plant biotechnology and forestry. Okay, how does plant biotechnology help in forestry? Forestry is definitely, uh, okay, something which we really need to look into, something which is fast disappearing, the trees, and uh, the main thing now is to do afforestation, especially in the belt where uh, there is a uh, margin between the forest and the village or the city or the uh, mountain uh, 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 or the mountainous regions. In all these places, we need to have uh, more trees being planted, even though there is a, a unique um, species uh, being planted. And for this, micropropagation comes in very handy. So I think forestry, play, uh, whether it is restoration or conservation, uh, uh, plant biotechnology helps in forestry. And uh, maybe you could, if you're interested, you could do the basic information or doing the uh, work of micropropagation or supplying. All this can be done from here and transported to the areas where they need to be afforested and uh, ifs of course uh, students with the botany background would definitely uh, have a weightage of uh, getting into ifs system uh, the indian forest system and actually uh, we are proud to say that three of our students are actually currently working as ifs officers so that is another welcome uh, uh, area where uh, the students can move into or look for as a career next next slide uh, then we also see uh, these are some of the uh, institutes which uh, uh, focus on forest, forest research. So there is in Dehradun 1 and Tropical Forest Research Institute in Jabalpur and uh, Institute of Forest Genetics and Tree Breeding in Coimbatore. And uh, Coimbatore, Trichy, these are areas where you have many colleges uh, which are actually contributing to a lot of study on forest. So the forest genetics and uh, the tree breeding, all these are being uh, undertaken in most of the colleges in that belt. And therefore, uh, definitely wherever there is a forest, I'm sure there will be uh, some colleges where uh, they can uh, moot this kind of research and uh, uh, help in the development of the forest. So these are some. And I would like to draw your attention on the Central Soil Salinity Research Institute. Now, some soil is something which we really need to take care of, especially in forests. It's not that you can go and water every day. It's not that you go and, uh, you know, monitor its uh, fertile, uh, the um, uh, nutrient supply. Uh, so all this has to be inbuilt. So uh, this uh, salinity, it might be a region where there is more saline. How we can combat, how we can uh, negate it. All these studies are also important. Uh, in fact, uh, in microbiology, there is something called a soil microbiology. So some of the botany students, I'm sure, will be doing a lot of work, especially in our uh, department. We were doing a lot of work on soil, physical characteristics, chemical characteristics, and also microbiological. So all this. Uh, uh, contributing to the uh, forest department. Next. OK. Now, this is something which is very dear to my heart, as uh, uh, Madhana Priya told. Uh, this is something called as ethnobotany. Uh, ethnobotany is nothing but it is a scientific way of collecting information about plants, their uses, whether it is medicinal or for food or for uh, uh, clothing or for uh, whatever reason, okay, and the cultures of these from the tribal people or indigenous people. And we had the privilege of actually interacting with the ruler uh, then there are Todas and Kotas from the uh, Nilagiris 
Kurumbas, also from Nilgiris. All these people, you know, you get information, and there are a lot of ethnobotanical studies which is happening, especially in the northwest, in the northwest region. And um, and if you uh, go to see uh, universally, you find that ethno, but almost sixty percent of the countries in the world go by tribal medicine and tribal knowledge. If you see countries like South America, then you can see, I mean, Mexico, part of it, then Africa, China, Japan, Egypt, Ceylon, India, Tibet, okay? All these countries, actually, if you go into more details, you get more than 60% of the countries which rely on, even now, tribal information, tribal knowledge, which they have translated into making either medicine or making something which will be useful for them. So that is one part, that is the ethnobotany. And then another gifted, uh, something which we have been gifted for centuries, uh, thousands of years is the knowledge on Ayurveda, Siddha and Yunani. Now, when, when I mention these three, these three branches are entity or big areas by themselves. Okay, so what does a botanist do in this? All right, now all that we need to know is the basic tenets or principle of these three uh, traditional knowledges. Okay, so if you know what is the principle of making medicine, what are the different medicines which can be made, how are they made, whom and why it should be given, small information only on this. We are not going to become doctors of Ayurveda, we are not going to become Siddha, etc. But we will be getting enough information and we have a so load of information on medicinal plants, thousands of medicinal plants and most of some of this which has been lost, but now we are trying to retrieve and get it from these Vedas, okay? and trying to prove that it is uh, valid even now and how we can proceed we'll see later next next slide okay now these are some of the areas uh, which um, uh, do research for uh, the tribal uh, the traditional knowledge and ethnobotany uh, one is the institute of alternate medicine and research in bangalore and this frlht foundation for revitalization of local health and traditions in Bangalore. Now, this is an NGO. They take a lot of botanists in this because they purely depend only on of identification of plants, growing them, bringing them into nursery, then finding out how what is their medicinal value, how it can be grown. In fact, they uh, distribute booklets which will be given to you know villages so that they know okay, this plant with the picture is given, how it should be planted, and what it is used for, what is this dosage. Now, this kind of information they are collecting, collating and producing large amount of literature. Okay, so it is like, you know, getting um, a digitalization of traditional knowledge. That is their prime. Now, in this, I'm definitely, I know most of the botanists and plant biotechnologists and other biotechnologists can also contribute because they are looking for authentic information. So all the authentic work can be carried out here. And it's a very beautiful institute located in Bangalore. Then you have Research Institute of Natural Herbal Medicine. And again, another institute of traditional medicine in Bangalore. And lastly, we see that uh, Central Institute of Medicinal and Aromatic Plants. Now, this is a duo. You have medicinal plants, okay, and also aromatic. Those which produce, you know, uh, different flavors or essential oils, etc., which we'll uh, see later on. And lastly, I would like to draw your attention to this um, Hawaii. Uh, you know, actually, uh, the University of Hawaii has large amount. You can just go in and check because they they definitely take people who like to study on plants and its medicinal aspects, biodiversity of plants and medicinal aspects. So I'm sure, uh, you know, like if you are inclined uh, to more of these plant uh, medil medicinal resources, etc., you can apply and they have fellowships and you can go there. Uh, and uh, one of our students was there on a fellowship for two years and uh, she did her entire research on biodiversity and medicinal plants and uh, that paved her way to go to Hawaii. And she said that was a very uh, useful um, uh, you know, exercise for her. And uh, this ethnobotany is also nowadays referred to as uh, ethnophytotechnology. So it's more like biotechnology now. Okay, so we're trying to harness much of ethnobotany through biotechnology, right? Okay, the next slide. Now we move on to Ayurveda Institutes, okay? As I told you, I am not 
go, uh, going into uh, the people who study for ayurveda extensively for 4 to 5 years we cannot compete with them i agree fully agree on it but you know the basic tenets and where we will come in is we will be giving them the added information on okay added information on technical details of plants okay and then how what are the different procedures you can adapt by way, whereby you can get maximum bioactive products so that is the angle in which we will be able to relate into some of these various institutes next and by the way ayurveda is an aryan in origin so it's all in sanskrit and siddha is uh, dravidian in origin it is uh, more basically uh, from south india so all the information is in tamil and i don't have to signify now uh, especially now the uh, the importance of siddha uh, most of you would have heard uh, this uh, during the um, uh, pandemic times uh, how a kabasura neer so it's a it's a, uh, a powder which has to be boiled and brought into made into a decoction it is helping people to promote immunity okay and also in a kind of uh, 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 nilavembu is a uh, neem okay mountain neem which is a very good uh, uh, treatment for dengue okay and uh, papaya leaves they increase the platelet counts so these are all you know contributions which came from this uh, siddha right okay so now uh, we can uh, supplement and authenticate and uh, uh, make it more uh, standardized all this can be done by botanists or plant biotechnologists or biotechnologists and lastly yunani yunani is something which actually came from persia but it is more of urdu and uh, it has uh, you know centers in bangalore and chennai and also it is very famous for uh, treating skin disorders okay next one okay so that much for ethnobotany and traditional knowledge now we go on to a very interesting component of uh, product of botany okay and definitely uh, the biotechnology has a big hand to play in this uh, because the processes involved would be fermentation the processes would be involving extraction so if it is extraction what kind of extraction and processes which will include uh, standardizing it making it perfect like for example quality assurance and uh, processes how good the process is where uh, we call something uh, as ccp critical controlling point points where actually you know the uh, infection can take place or contamination can take place in all these things you know all these industries uh, will definitely need personnel for quality assurance and you can do a consultancy for this okay uh, then find out the efficiency of this uh, these components and definitely contribute to research and development and what are they they are essential oils and dyes okay essential oils are definitely uh, co uh, they are concentrates okay and uh, typical examples i can give you for essential oils can be the uh, lemongrass okay and uh, vanilla vanilla flavor i'm sorry flavor i can give you lemongrass citrus uh, cocoa flavor vanilla flavor all these are plant products similarly essential oils essential oils are again those plants which have glands in them the leaves which have the glands you know you extract the oil for example eucalyptus oil okay then you have mint oil your mentha oil now these are all highly concentrated components uh, just a few drops of it is sufficient enough to uh, you know so sometimes negate much of the allergies and diseases uh, the essential oil is uh, reached its perfection or has maximum usage in egypt Uh, there are people who have you know sort of uh, uh, made a thorough way of uh, extracting these essential oils and they are one of the best to produce essential oils and essential oil has a lot of uh, economic value because uh, it is used uh, as in the diffuser diffuser is nothing but a ceramic bowl uh, which will have a component place where you can keep the lamp and the uh, uh, lamp you can see in the picture and uh, you find that the oil is on top and as it evaporates it gives you the smell and if you see the uh, various components which come out of it okay like for example iso uh, isoamyl acetate and these are various uh, uh, methyl salicylate okay wintergreen is supposed to be good for cold okay so if somebody is an allergy or sneezing etc that would be an ideal uh, essential oil so these are all companies i will give you in the next slide what are the companies which do this and then of course natural dyes and going to fragrance fragrance is a perfume industry and uh, we will be very uh, sadly mistaken that we know europe is uh, very famous for producing perfumes okay now 
where do their raw material come where does their raw material need comes from it basically comes from most of the tropical countries uh, because we have much of these flowering plants uh, which have beautiful fragrance so there are many industries in, uh, uh, you know which export uh, not the scent per se but they export the extract till that last stage it is done and exported especially to the european countries so you you know the european countries are very famous for their perfumes so can you imagine the amount of you know we we have exposure and we have the um, uh, you know the uh, uh, chances uh, for work or to carry out research in these areas maybe you know but if you are not then i wanted to highlight on these because uh, there have been girls students who been getting into these companies and they have been contributing uh, really well next okay now these are some of the companies there is a uh, one in up kannauj this is one of the big centers for this uh, essential oils extraction and then there are testing labs lot of testing individual private labs and uh, bush book allen you all must be heard, you must have heard about it flavor industry all the flavors required for the confectionery or for food uh, the food color and all this okay is uh, they do employ some of uh, students who are uh, you know proficient in uh, plants or plant biotechnology or biotechnologists uh, as uh, also then you have national institute of raisin and gum then simrise is another uh, company uh, which caters to the flavor industry taste maker uh, master is another one okay so these are all companies actually industries which are there which are definitely looking out so maybe what i suggest is when you're doing your biotechnology you've already finished you're doing your project okay you're doing some study or extra work or you want to go and do internship look for such various industries don't be stuck only with biotechnology lab okay biotechnology is the most important uh, component i say but that's the one which is going to contribute or play an important role in all these various uh, areas so you you know if you are interested or you're living in chennai okay or you're living in uh, up you maybe you will start thinking or you're in mumbai you will start you know maybe wanting to go for internship there or you want to if you are interested okay uh, uh, of adding information definitely they'll be looking out for new products patenting products all this the chances are enormous in these institutes yeah next next we go on to the herbal uh, formulations when we say herbal formulations next slide uh, herbal formulation these are uh, the formulations or herbal products herbal medicines which we are going to get from various plants okay so now if you see here uh, a, a quick run through the plant material okay you have the plant material which produces secondary metabolites and there's an extraction and purification process and what does it yield it gives all these secondary metabolites which have a significant role in medicine pharmaceuticals in perfumery in food cosmetics and textile so can you imagine the uh, various industries into which these secondary metabolites actually creep into and uh, natural uh, natural plant source okay you have the plant which plant where do you get this information so the primary source comes from traditional knowledge or it can come from these ethnobotanical studies okay so they are the primary source they are going to give you the information and what would you do you will perform cancer or microbial assay you will identify or the active compound so for this you know identification of active compounds can be done only by biotechnologists because they are only well versed in okay all these handling analytical instruments like uh, separation different separation techniques column or gas chromatography or you know the distillation or the whatever the fermentation process uh, the um, uh, actual upscale downscale all these things information can come you know from biotechnologists and they'll be the ones to help in getting maximum of these secondary metabolites so that is how we connect you know the herbal formulations with the uh, uh, okay and once you identified uh, this particular plant has got this terpenoid or this alkaloid and it is good for this 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 then what do we do we need to increase the number of plants okay now supposing each plant has a very low amount of this bioactive substance what do we do we need to help in we will have to uh, you know through tissue culture or micro propagation we can optimize the presence of these bioactive compounds next we have um, 
then you have the herbal formulations okay and uh, uh, one more thing which is very important here is uh, i would like to say it is low cost and high volume materials can be produced and one another interesting thing is uh, drug discovery drug design okay extraction standardization all this is done together along with the biotechnologists because what we can do is the active principles pathway reconstruction how the active principle is produced the pathway reconstruction the genome sequence all this lies in the hand of the bioinformaticists and the biotechnologists and of course cloning will come in by the plant biotechnologists so a com combination of all these people together will bridge the gap between ethnobotanical study and pharma industry then quickly we'll run through environmental biotechnology the next one you must be knowing a lot about this uh, okay these are some of the herbal uh, uh, industries okay uh, dabur hamdad viko himalaya arvind there are enough number of uh, uh, these uh, uh, you know uh, what do you say industries which produce uh, plant products as medicines i'm sure they will uh, grab people who have more information uh, regarding the extraction process or authentication standardizing etc okay now we move on to environmental biotechnology so here we see the next slide uh, what is it it is mainly involving clean up okay removing the non toxins and making everything eco friendly so on the right side you see uh, we can detoxify herbicide and insectic insecticides using microorganism sewage treatment of course completely uh, microbial in nature how it can be used and then detoxification of industrial effluents now we know the pollution control board is very keen and you know wants to put a stop to all this uh, effluents coming into the uh, water body so that is where the biotechnologists and uh, if you see here bacteria fungi are used as bio uh, biological agents even algae can be used next slide Uh, we have lot of these centers like you know in uh, chennai we have this international institute of biotechnology toxicology then the csir madras complex they work a lot on environmental biotechnology and so also the indian institute of technology iit madras also is working a lot on and center for biotechnology anna university is working on environmental biotechnology okay then we move on to fermentation technology okay so in fermentation technology of course here again the next slide Uh, okay here we again see most of it is related to food and uh, actually if you see fermentation you can taste uh, trace it back to time immemorial immemorial because right from uh, producing wine to prepare preparing cheese or curd etc it was all done by the ancient people right and of course pasture pasteurization so we have a lot of history or information on fermentation and uh, you know fermented foods are very good and uh, there is a lot of technicalities involved in fermentation technology whether it is uh, the enzyme uh, e enzyme um, uh, and the uh, reaction okay or whether substrate enzyme reaction or the uh, different rates at which it happens or the upscale downscale all these fermentation processes you know a biotechnologist will definitely have a first hand information so i think that is a very good uh, uh, place where biotechnologists can get into okay whether it is producing antibodies uh, antibiotics or polysaccharides or food wine uh, soybean or whatever uh, they play a very important role and uh, next slide shows what are the important centers where uh, this fermentation technology can be is applied of course all the dairy industries okay then um, uh, post harvest engineering okay uh, because uh, what happens is especially uh, post harvest is related to cereals Uh, and fruits and vegetables after they are harvested now you it needs to be processed otherwise most of these vegetables and fruits will start spoiling okay they don't have a very long shelf life so therefore we need to have you know you can see that uh, some of these institutes uh, play an important role in uh, doing a lot of process technology and uh, standardizing them and giving it to various uh, uh, food industries so that they will be able to implement what they are doing in research and one thing is algal research center in mandapam they are doing a lot of work on uh, you know uh, uh, products from sea that is agar agar or whether it is uh, like for example algin all these uh, find a very immense economical use and uh, those are centers where they concentrate on the processes or perfecting it fine tuning it and some of these industries are of course food uh, processing centers where somebody can get someone can get into uh, so these are i think i chose mostly from chennai and also kisan etc 
yeah next we go on to agricultural biotechnology okay agricultural biotechnology is um, uh, is uh, something to do okay here we have algal biofertilizer microbial okay you will say what does a plant bio biologist or a biotechnologist will have to do with the uh, these fertilizers now you can raise them in large amount actually you can produce a consortium of bacteria phosphate solubilizing bacteria okay uh, so the nitrogen uh, producing uh, nitrate uh, assimilating bacteria all these can contribute or enhance the fertilization similarly the blue green algae they produce uh, they fix nitrogen in a very large scale so therefore it can be used for uh, so in all these you know uh, people who have basic knowledge on botany or plant biotechnology and including biotechnological process can definitely go in uh, and uh, contribute then of course biofuels you all know about it are the organic farming is becoming the in thing nowadays and what is very important is that uh, you can do a lot of patenting here uh, because you have those pesticides uh, which can be produced uh, the organic pesticides can be formulated okay you can do studies on it and there are studies being done on organic pesticides you just go into the net and you'll find n number of you know pesticides which are organic in nature now you find one and you find it successful then it can be your own right your intellectual property right okay then of course horticulture we already saw earlier okay next slide Next slide will show the various uh, uh, institutes and research uh, centers, okay, which uh, National Bureau of Plant Genetic Resources in New Delhi is a very active uh, contributor to this agriculture, then horticulture, etc. Okay, next. Uh, then we also see uh, that you can apply for, see, you can take the State Public Service Commission and get into these horticulture, etc. Okay, uh, or you can become an officer, etc. Then you can become a technical assistant in uh, some of these uh, ICAR uh, uh, agriculture universities and then DRDOs, etc. CSAR, etc. Okay, right. So this is the job opportunities in horticulture. Then next we move on to the last component that is entrepreneurial. Okay, so now one is you can become a teacher teaching as a profession for which you need to clear the slate and net which you know. One word of caution is if you are a botany student, please stick on to MSc Botany. Okay, only then you can teach botany. Okay, as a professor. Similarly, if you are a biotechnologist, please maintain the same line, and that is something which you need to know. Next is we saw the various uh, areas under biotechnology where you can either go as a researcher, right, or you contribute, or you get into some of these companies. Okay, and that could be you know your way of uh, furthering your career, and. Last is something which is very important and becoming very, very, uh, you know, uh, popular nowadays is entrepreneur, entrepreneurship. So uh, cu mushroom cultivation. As a botanist, you can do this. And there is immense, you know, um, uh, making money or making this as a career. And single cell protein like spirulina, Parry and Co is doing. It could be done in a smaller scale. And that could venture in getting you money as a career option. Seaweed liquid fertilizer, okay, collect the seaweeds and then convert it into a fertilizer, organic farming and cultivation of medicinal and aromatic plants in a nursery. So if you are gifted with large amount of land, okay, maybe you could suggest this and you know, the amount you get for these medicinal plants is amazing because they require in large amount and therefore it is important that we, um, you know, like uh, be able to uh, utilize okay the medicinal plants and aromatic plants okay so that's as much as uh, the uh, this thing talk on carrier uh, options uh, uh, okay. okay can you hear me yeah you can hear you ma'am someone okay, muted okay. their mic yeah okay 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 all right so uh, i think that that is how much i made it like you know one is teaching it could be another one is research contribution to the research industry or getting your career in the research uh, centers etc and then you have the entrepreneurial part of it so these are the three components i just chose to uh, let you know about the uh, various options available in botany the biotechnology and allied subjects and i think there were three questions which were raised uh, i'll quick can I quickly run through and give answers for that? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes, ah. ma'am. Ah. Can oh, I ask the oh. question, ma'am? So it will be easy for you to answer it orderly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yes. Yeah. 
Uh, so, ma'am, thank you so much, and for engaging yeah. our participants, and also on enlightening and explaining the various applications and domains of plant biotechnology. And I hope this session was a great eye-opening to all our participants also. And now we've collected questions from our WebEx and YouTube participants, ma'am. Oh. So based on that, the first question is by Samrudhi Mane. Oh. He asks, like, what is the path an individual must take to become a biotech scientist? Specifically for immunology in foreign countries. Okay. Okay. Uh, see, um, I gathered some information with the for this question. Okay. Now, basically, the European countries are doing pretty well in this area, especially. Uh, some of the kind of, some of the universities in UK are more into biochemical and biomedical uh, research. Okay, so I I think uh, you could try for UK. Okay, uh, University of Cambridge or Edinburgh, and also uh, some of these industries like you know um, biotechnology institutes in uh, Austria and Vienna. They have bio centers where they have application biotechnology. And what is important is they have research internships. Now, this is uh, something which is very good you can link into because it is internship is you'll be literally working in some uh, uh, maybe industry or pharma company or whatever, bio centers. And that will give you an added value that once you're good, you prove yourself, maybe you could definitely get a career there also. Okay, so uh, then you also have in France. Okay, uh, actually in France, you have a lot of food technology uh, institutes, uh, information for others. And there is something called a Lille University where uh, most of the students, you know, they do part of their study there. And they somehow get absorbed in a lot of food industries and especially the cheese and the dairy uh, product industries there. Okay, and uh, in all these countries, okay, whether it is UK or France or uh, I told you Austria and even Switzerland, in all these places, the interface between industry and institution is very strong. That means uh, the industry invests money in institutions. Okay, so what they do is they give money and they tell them, okay, solve this problem for me. So they, these people act as, you know, uh, they work on those problems and they'll be able to solve the resolve issues for them. So uh, therefore, you know, the funding is very good in these most of these countries. That is why I was telling you more on European countries. And uh, even um, University of Graz, uh, MS Biotechnology, Molecular uh, Biology uh, is very famous there. Okay. And um, Molecular Biotech, which will definitely include immunology, is very famous in um, University of Heidelberg in Germany. Okay, so these are some of the places where you can think of going. And what is special in the European countries is um, that, um, you know, you get work permit very easily. And two, uh, not all universities look for GRE. Uh, your uh, undergrad score is enough. But if you have GRE, it's an added, uh, you know, compliment. And then most of the universities in the European countries come under the governance of government. Therefore, uh, the fee structure could be comparatively lesser. Okay, so that's the answer for uh, this person. Yeah. Yes. Next, I mm. think that is me a meta question. Ma'am, and next question is by Brunal Date. He asks mm. what he should do when he wants to enter field of biotechnology in respect to nanotechnology, and uh, what is the benefit with taking nanotech with biotech as career? Okay. See, uh, as I told you, these are all interrelated. Now, nano in nanotechnology. Uh, it's all about nanoparticles and it is more out of their application. Okay, so uh, I don't know, I, uh, for me, uh, I'm not differentiating nanotechnology separately uh, and I'm not very proficient in nanotechnology to be very frank. So for me, whatever little information I've had and we have studied and we have come across, uh, we have attended sessions, is uh, some of these, uh, you know, particles can be added on nanoparticles can be added on to the uh, you know paint on the wall etc so maybe uh, application of both biotechnology and nanotechnology has more uh, you know combining both has more applications than maybe biotechnology it will be approachable and can be utilized in day to day life that is my uh, maybe the answer yeah uh, yes ma'am thank you so much uh, and the next question is a very general question which all msc students would have 
so this question has been asked by a random person and he ask uh, whether phd or uh, job is more uh, uh, which one to choose according to your opinion and uh, what would be the uh, circumstances by financially job security and others in comparison of going to a job or taking a phd okay uh, now see there are two components here now for example if you take csir exam okay there now you can either use that exam to qualify yourself to become a teacher okay or you can go into research jrf and srf etc okay and you get your money and what you should do is what they are suggesting is that you get into phd register for phd and you can continue with the fund or get into a project so if it is teaching it is a one time and you go into it your your career is made and it is permanent now when it comes to research it is like you know you move okay after 3 years what okay there is that element of you know uh, uncertainty there but if you're really good and your work is good i'm sure 100% that you will definitely get into some project or the other okay because you find that if you take gate exam okay your getting a job is better because it is going to assess how much of in uh, knowledge you have in life science and biochemistry okay so you can get into jobs easily i mean that gate score will help you and it will also help you to get scholarships all right so i think you need to plan uh, decide uh, you know whether you want to settle for uh, and stop your research because once you go into teaching we are supposed to do research but i promise you it is not going to be easy at all because our primary uh, importance or our uh, um, priority will be teaching okay but definitely we can motivate students on these lines of you know helping them to do small research for which we can be with them together and uh, uh, be through with uh, them an, in a semester or a year so that way your research can but when it is this side it is 100% research then you really need to take a choice you, you need to take a uh, this thing uh, you have to make a choice either this or that but when it comes to uh, teaching i don't know if everybody can get into teaching line okay uh, but, but you can think of you know uh, opening your, you can produce you can do online okay there are a lot of online teaching which is going on and uh, certain of these online teaching portals uh, can make use of your um, uh, information or your knowledge technical knowledge and they uh, host it into uh, different countries okay uh, us and china Uh, at the ug level at the pg level so i think if you very keen in teaching you didn't get a uh, job as a professor you can definitely do your research and also do this online teaching which is become very uh, predominant now maybe good for us uh, pandemic it is online is being so you know utilized so much and there are any number of portals you can go in and find there is one called as live tutor uh, they also do this law uh, portal which Uh, organizes lot of these talks okay regular classes for students in us also so you can go and get into such of these and if teaching is your passion please do that yes ma'am mm. uh, ma'am the next question is uh, what are the risks of biotechnology other than scientific fields and also what are the benefits and risks of doing phd in private institutions okay uh, now see um, private institutions depends on what those prime centers are some of the private institutions are doing extremely well and they have uh, funding for so many projects they have well equipped labs the best of the yeah. instruments everything available so that way we cannot justify or we can say uh, private and uh, you know something which is to do with the government support okay so again wherever you are it is your individual performance your individual uh, work and your capacity okay your sincerity which is going to help you in the long run okay so between the two uh, i i can't say this is less or that is more uh, so what was the other question ma'am what are the risks of biotechnology mm. compared to other scientific fields uh, i can't say risk because uh, as i was explaining the entire uh, through the series of uh, slides Uh, biotechnology plays a role everywhere everywhere say whether it is extraction of something you need somebody who is, knows the separation techniques who needs uh, analytical skill should be there 
okay whether it is going to be um, uh, analyzing or coming to some conclusion drawing conclusions you need a bioinformatics person okay computational biologist so uh, there is no risk involved in this except maybe uh, but and in the pure sense in fact the uh, openings are getting lesser and lesser now unless see only botany might not fetch too much but if i combine plant biotechnology I, definitely i can enter into these various areas okay right so uh, i feel uh, yeah that's uh, there's no risk factor involved here yeah ma'am we have a few more questions if you mm. are comfortable we can continue yeah, yeah sure yes mm -hmm. yes ma'am and the next question is from keshika durai she says mm. that she has changed from plant biotechnology to environmental biotechnology in a pg mm. and she wants to know what, how will her career be after this will there be any benefits for it okay now since you have changed the branch uh, definitely you cannot think of teaching as your profession okay so that is ruled out but environment is definitely the in thing and uh, there are any number of ngos large number of ngos i i, I can tell you from a city like in chennai uh, there are with mnc collaboration there are enough ngos non governmental organizations now they are all looking out for people who are very sincere and dedicated i am sure you will be able to uh, get into any of this so you could think of entering into these um, uh, centers organizations which, which will be studying okay it could be a data collection it could be uh, come, arriving at one conclusion after collecting the data okay and then arriving at a solution all right and then there are these various laboratories environmental laboratories who will be consultants for these industries okay now for example air pollution now they have to get uh, you know their the uh, uh, certificate saying from a particular uh, environmental laboratory which is uh, recognized by central government okay now they have to uh, get certificate from them regarding how many trees have to be planted to bring down the carbon dioxide or carbon monoxide emission okay if the tire factory is producing so much of emission what is the uh, thing they need to do how will be counter uh, attack this uh, emission how it can be brought down so all these studies are there and it is a must there should be a consultant in these industries a social worker should be there and an environmentalist has to be there who knows and also the laws about environment please study that most of them don't know and if you are thorough with the environmental laws okay you will be person in demand because i have interacted with a lot of these labs and they don't know many times uh, the rules and regulations so i'm sure in your uh, environmental uh, science uh, you will be having a paper on environmental law which is very very important which i think you should uh, if you uh, start looking into it and with a little bit of you know and that's why some of them are also doing <coughs> they're taking a little courses on um, uh, on the law side so that you know they will know exactly that you can go there and argue because there are so many cases filed against these industries so if you know the law then you'll be able to help the industry or you'll be able to help the government whatever okay so there is hope it's not that this, uh, uh, not there but definitely a lot of ngos are there and uh, consultants are there consultancies are there you could definitely get in into that Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Ah. Uh. Ma'am, the next question is from Asha Raj. She oh. says she wants to start her own business on SCP culture, and oh. what should we do for that? Yeah. So now this uh, single cell protein is uh, basically spirulina. Spirulina. Uh, this is generally used for as a uh, uh, we cannot human not for human consumption. Okay, it can be uh, feed used for the fishes, etc. Now this spirulina, uh, it needs um, is a typical uh, growing like you know culture culturing them. So large, you need some space. Then uh, you, the pumping of water, removing, and that uh, all the factors uh, should be monitored. Uh, for that actually uh, parianco is doing that spirulina culture and also uh, there was one center in taramani which was doing in chennai i don't know if you are in chennai you can go to this taramani place where uh, they are doing this uh, spirulina you can google and find out so it's a good thing actually uh, i uh, advocate and i recommend only thing it should be an open space you should have an open space it cannot be done indoors okay it should be mm -hmm. exposed to the sunlight and there is a after it is grown there is a process 
you need to you know uh, 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 filter it and then how you need to clean it so there is a process which can be uh, got uh, from uh, the net you can get this information i am sure it is a, a very good uh, and also uh, spirulina tablets are taken by people uh, only thing sometimes uh, some of them do not digest there is large amount of uh, nucleic acids in it so sometimes it might be difficult for people to uh, maybe to assimilate so but anyway uh, it's a very good idea i am sure you can do it yes ma'am and one yeah. final question for the evening uh, yeah. manas tripathi wants to know uh, like he wants you to suggest which has a better career either msc biotechnology or mba biotechnology and uh, following this question is what it is to be done to join medical biotechnology okay now mba biotechnology i don't know much about it but i tell you uh, what happens is it will be only marketing side okay you will know the in information in thing you will be able to go and justify why you are selling that product or bio reactor to this person and an inst you can go sell instruments or whatever or set up instruments or uh, uh, rotary evaporator or high end instruments uh, you will know but you you will know the information okay the uh, all the information and you will be able to market so basically i am sure it will be more of marketing okay uh, secondly uh, if it is msc biotechnology as i told you you have all these options you can definitely get into food technology fermentation technology environment technology if you are interested because you are getting basic information on all these things and you might be specializing in your project or in your final semester in one particular area and you can definitely uh, put in your resources there and uh, it will be remunerative okay and uh, the other one is uh, what was the other, last one uh what is need to be done to join medical biotechnology ma'am ah medical okay medical biotechnology i don't know because uh, definitely they would be looking for a basic knowledge of medicine medical so i don't know i'm not too sure about it uh, but uh, i don't know if they will take um, uh, somebody from an undergraduate of bsc biotechnology into that i am not sure uh, you can just find out i'm sorry i'm not able to give you information on that Uh, yes ma'am uh, thank yeah. you so much ma'am i i hope all the questions from all the participants have been addressed on this uh, note i thank priscilla ma'am for giving us a wonderful evening and inspiring us with the talk so i will now request mr godwin to take over the session um thank you very much ma'am it's great to see how biotechnology can have great range of opportunities yeah so now i would request miss janani to give a vote of thanks to ma'am Good evening, all. On behalf of IMOT and NTA team, I would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to Respecter and our distinguished Chief Guest Professor Vizilla Jagatmohan, former Vice Principal Stella Maris College, for sharing this wonderful career opportunity. Now, more information about plant biotechnology, making excellent presentation, and making this webinar interesting and meaningful, ma'am. This talk is really helpful and very informative for biotechnology and allied subject students. Be really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. Thank you so much, ma'am. I extend my thanks to host speakers, Mr. Gaurav, Ms. Madana Priya, for hosting this beautiful webinar session with interesting questions. I extend my special thanks to Dr. Mahesh, Mr. Pranav, and the entire LLB team for giving this collaboration opportunity. So I am happy to for organize this grateful and effective webinar series. Without participants, we can't conduct this webinar. So finally, I would like to thank all the wonderful participants who have turned up in such a great number and listened this good career talk and giving continuous support to the team conducting this webinar. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Once again, thank you all. Thank you so much for giving this opportunity. Thank you, thank, thank you, you Janani. Yeah, thank you, thank ma'am. And and the feedback link will be shared uh, yeah. in the WhatsApp and Telegram groups, so you can get the certificates after that. So thank you very much, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for.